welcome back. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Caroline and for the month of December I've been putting out daily videos and calling them Vlogmas. So if you are enjoying my content and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. And when you hit that bell, uh, YouTube lets you know when I do put out a new video. And uh, I did do a giveaway for my 100th uh, subscribers and I see that my subscribers are climbing again so if I can reach 200 subscribers by the end of December then we will do a New Year's giveaway so just keep that in mind so as you can see we're changing things up I'm sitting in a different room and today's uh, video is actually a crafting video so I'm just gonna come on now and do the advent calendars I'll edit my crafting video, add it to this, and then I'll come back at the end to show you the finished product. So let's go ahead and do the dogs first because Max is anxious for his. So today is Sunday, December 20. So we are going for number 20. Try to get this out. Alrighty. So today's treat is uh, those little Nutribites that I purchased at Dollarama. They are chicken flavor. So I put two each in their little box for them. And of course, Max is here for his. There you go. Rosie, want your treat? She's not coming. Anyways, as you can see, I was feeling much better today and decided to craft so I could get those finished because they are for Christmas presents. Now, let's get into my advent calendar. So we're gonna start off with the Star Wars, the Mandalorian. And we're looking for number 20. 20 is down there on the bottom. I'm kind of sitting away from the camera tonight. So what did we get today? Of course. And little child again this one he's got his arms up in here i'm gonna have that because i've already eaten my dinner so we're gonna put that one away and we are 24 days to celebrate my lottery sketch scratch ticket so number 20 is right down there So we shall pop that one open and it's a, a green scratch area there get my fancy scratching tool a butter knife scratch right here leaning on some Christmas presents here so now I don't know which one I just uh, scratched. Was it the second one in? Yeah. Okay, there's a $500, a $100, a $1,000, and an ornament. So that's it right there where my finger is. And this will be our second ornament. So that's funny, the first time it was a two and now it's a 20. So we're gonna add that 20 in here. So there's quite a few on the back there that have two numbers on them already. So that is the end of that. I hope you enjoyed my crafting video. I was using my Cricut machine, so I took you through the process of what you need to do to create uh, what I was making. I'll add a little clip at the end to show you the finished product. I'm actually going to be crafting and using my Cricut machine. So I've already made one to show you what I'm doing, but I do want to make four of them. So I will show you what is involved in making one of these. So what I did was I bought a pot holder from the Dollar Tree for $1.25. And this is the pattern I chose to put on it. Tis the season for baking. So I'm just going to sit this up here so you can see. And before I do, um, I did make these. This is Balik, Rosie, Max. Rowan was a red bone coonhound that we had out in Manitoba. And I loved him dearly. 
but he was too much and too strong for myself and he was always pulling me down and we were afraid that I'd be breaking some bones with him. We did give him up for adoption. He's not too far away actually. He's over towards the Ottawa area so we can go visit him whenever we want. And then I don't know if you can see this one but this was Jameson, my little pot belly pig and we had to leave him behind in Manitoba because uh, of moving back to Ontario. He was the best pet ever. He was awesome. Anyway, let's get crafting. So I have my uh, MacBook Air here and I've already got my design on because like I said, I already made one. So let's just put that up there so you can see. And so we're gonna click on this. Add to canvas. All right, so now it's on our canvas. Oh, they did a double one. Okay, so let's get rid of that one. So we're going to click on it. I already saved the size. Um, I wanted four wide by 4.5. Uh, I'm going to make it on a gray one this time. Now, if you can see up here, it's 4.136 by 5.5. Well, that's too big because what I measured, I'm going to make the next one on gray here. I measured that I wanted uh, four wide by 4.5. So that's what I did there. Okay, so we're just gonna set that aside for now. And we're going to change this. And this is how you change it. You wanna come down here and you wanna unlock. Then you wanna come back up here and you wanna change that to four. And we wanna change this to 4.5. So we like that. We're gonna come back down here. We're gonna lock it, okay? Now, because this is gonna be layered in four different colors, we want to leave this how it is. If all this was one color design, we would come down here and hit weld, but we don't wanna do that because we want to cut the different colors out. So now that I'm happy with that, we go up here, we hit make it. And uh, you get your Cricut mat out and you make sure there's nothing stuck to it. These things are really, really sticky. And the best way to clean them is with Dawn dish soap and uh, water. And then you hang to dry. So I've got my mat ready. Uh, it's showing us that the first one we're going to cut is black. And so we kind of need a piece that is four and a half by three and a half. I'm just using some scraps here that I have. So normally um, this would have a film on it, a, a clear film, which I peeled off already. Let me show you what it looks like. So it did have this blue film on the back. Okay. And I just, I peeled it off. So this is the side that we want to be facing up. The side that we peeled the film off of. And I'll show you why later. So because the mat is so sticky, we got to be careful how we stick this on or we'll be fighting with it. So I'm going to put that on. And I'm going to use that fancy roller that I got in my mystery box. I love this. So we just want to make sure that our mat isn't going to slide or our vinyl is not going to slide off our mat. Okay. Now, before we put it into the machine, when you are doing an iron on, you need to mirror the image. So reverse it. So you want to come over here and hit mirror. Now do you see how it's reversed? So now I'm going to hit continue. I'm going to get my mat ready to go into my machine. I'm going to hold it here. So I want to come up here. We're, we're doing everyday iron on. So we choose that. I'm just going to go with the pressure default. If it was very intricate, I may want to do more, but we're using default. We know that it has been, uh, we know that we have reversed the image. And so we want to load the material. The machine tells you what to do. So you want to hold on to your mat. You want to hit this uh, flashing button first and it feeds it in. So the machine's getting ready. So now it's saying press go. Well, our go button is the C, the little cricket flashing. 
So we're going to hit that and it's going to start cutting. So I'm going to look to see what my next color is. My next color is going to be the brown. And I know I don't need a very big piece because it's the, um, the rolling pin. So we just have to sit and wait now until this goes all the way around to 100%. So this one takes a little longer because of all the letters and um, the, the words that it's cutting out, but you'll see how speedy fast the others go through. So the vinyl that I am using, I did purchase this on Amazon. They're 12 by 12 sheets. And it's uh, this right here. I got 30 sheets in it of all different colors. Down here it says iron on vinyl. Oh, actually, sorry, they're 12 by 10 inch sheets. I also got a bo bonus uh, weeding tool and a Teflon sheet. The Teflon is for when you're ironing the product on. But I prefer to just use um, parchment paper. So that's what I'm going to do today. So we're just gonna wait for this. And if you're unsure of uh, what way to put it side down, the, the instructions are right on the back. So it just says, make sure your design is mirrored by flipping it horizontally in your cutting machine software. Cutting stage, remove the protective blue film and place this side up on the cutting mat. This side will be white color. In the black, it's black, but you'll see in my other ones that it's gonna be a lighter cutter, color. And then it says, cut using the iron-on settings. The weeding stage. Remove excess vinyl around your design using the included weeding tool. And then the ironing stage. Preheat your iron, So, which is what I'm using today. So let's see now. It's 100% uh, done. This little guy is flashing again for me to take the paper out. So it's cut. We're going to flip it over. The best way to remove your vinyl so that it won't curl or keep some of your pattern is to do this. So you want to just peel it off like this. And it came off perfect. So what I'm going to do is look to see where my design cut. Okay, we'll come back to that. We're looking, our next color is brown. I've already got some brown scrap here. I'm going to, let me see how we're gonna do this. I'm gonna cut this here so that maybe this is all we need. Always keep your scraps because if you only need to cut a very small piece, you will definitely use it. So we're gonna go to edit. We wanna make sure that it mirrored and it didn't. I don't think it matters for the rolling pin, but we're gonna do it anyway. We're gonna go back to done. And actually, we're gonna click on it again. I wanna to look to see the size. So it was one by three. So as long as my vinyl here, and you see I have this, but it's not big enough. So that's no good. So we're gonna take this bigger piece and we're gonna stick this on. Now, if I was doing these all at once, I would cut a couple at a time, but because I'm showing you what we're doing here, we're only cutting one, one. That, so this way I can do the other two together. So we're gonna roll that on. I'm gonna go back here and hit done. It's uh, flashing for me to, now my machine does have two little uh, holding clips, so make sure your mat sits under that. We're going to push that to feed it in. We're going to wait for this one to flash. It's flashing. We hit go. This one cuts really fast. It's done already. It was faster than the black, wasn't it? So we're gonna hit this to take it out. We're gonna flip it over. We're going to peel our pattern away. 
So I know that it printed up in this top corner and I can see it. So I'm just going to cut that out and sit it aside. So it's right here. Make sure I don't cut off the handle there. Using the daylight sun too. So I can see. So I'm going to sit that there and we're going to put this away. So our next color is green. Now, I don't think I need a very big piece of green. So we're going with this, but we're going to hit edit because we need to mirror that. And then when I look up, I only need like a one by three. So I'm hoping that this probably isn't long enough. No. Okay. Let me see if I got some more green somewhere. I don't really want to have to use a, a whole sheet of green. Okay, so I didn't have any scraps of green. I had to go and get a full sheet, but I'm going to cut it down so that I'm not wasting um, the backing on it. I'm not peeling the whole thing off. So I got my, I'm going to sit this up here because it's quite sticky, like I said. That'll sit up there. I'm going to feed this through my cutter here. And I only need like an inch. So, where did I put that measuring tape? Okay, so we're gonna have to use a full sheet. So I only need it to be one by three, right? But I'm going to measure a, uh, one and a half inch to give me enough. I don't wanna waste my vinyl. So we're gonna put that up there a bit. That gives us just over one and an inch, one and a half inch. So I'm gonna cut it with my paper cutter. And I may need to use the scissors because it does have that um, film on the back, but we will cut that off. That way it stays on to the other stuff. And it's not a big deal. We're, we actually want to remove that anyway. So this will be a good example to show you. So there, that's off. So it does tell you to stop, remove this blue film before cutting, which is very helpful because sometimes you forget which way to put it. So let's get rid of that now. We're gonna take our mat back down, get rid of the measuring tape. I'm gonna stick this on. And I'll want to cut three of these anyway, so I'll be able to use this for the other two. So remember to take that blue film off, right? White side up is what we want. Get out my fancy roller here that I love. We're going to roll that on. So those mystery boxes are well worth the money. You never know what you're going to get in it. All right, so we're going to feed this in. We are mirrored. We know what size we need, so we're gonna hit done here. And it's telling me to load, so my load is flashing. We're gonna hit that, and she's preparing. And then we're gonna hit the cricket. It says press go. The, the screen always tells you what to do. So my go button looks like, oh, I'll show you. It's a C, in case you can't see it on the camera. And my little cutie is with us tonight too. So this is uh, going to cut fast because it's only three little leaves. It's saying 100% cut already. And it's telling us we're done. You can feed it out. We're going to flip it over so we don't curl. We take that off. And all right, we're gonna look for that in a minute. Okay, so we're now it's telling us to put the red in. So there's the red. Remember, we put the back end up. So I've already removed the, the film because I've already used this piece. I'm gonna stick it on. We're gonna hit edit. We wanna make sure that it is mirrored, and now it is. Now, if you see, they've spaced it out perfectly for when I go to iron it on. So I basically need to have a piece that's, you know, three and a half inches by three. 
I, I certainly have that with this big chunk. Let's use our roller again to make sure she sticks. I have noticed sometimes if you're using uh, cardstock or some different vinyls, if it catches in the machine, you got to start all over. So always make sure that it's adhered pretty good to your sticky mat. So we're going to push that. Oh, we need to go back here and hit done. Okay, so now it's telling me to press go. So the go button looks like this. It's just a little C with like a little, a little cricket on the top. So we're going to push that in. And I usually use this light here to, uh, oh yeah, see how I can see it now with my light. So we're going to cut that off right there. Okay, so we've got that. And while well, that's going, I'll look for my, now it's 100% done, so we're going to take that out. I just want to come here and find my words on the black. Oh, where, oh, where are you? Alrighty, so I can see it's pretty much, I'm just going to cut a big chunk off here. I can see that it's, you want to try to save as much vinyl as you can because it's not cheap. And so always keep your little scraps. Like there's a perfect little scrap size if I need to do something small in black. Okay, so I've got all my vinyl. And we're going to cut, take the red off and cut it down to size. Okay, see how that didn't roll? If you had to cut it a different way, it would have rolled. Sorry there, little guy. We need a name for him. We need to name him. Let me know if you have any suggestions. So we know that we were cutting out the uh, the berries and then the other little piece. And again, very hard to see. You see it much better when you're just using permanent vinyl. Okay, so I see that. So the berries aren't far. Are the berries up there? Yes. Okay, I see it. So we're going to cut down here. Again, trying to save as much vinyl as I can. So if any of you are familiar with... Um, Using a Cricut machine and vinyl, you'll know that when you use regular vinyl, you would use a transfer tape. So your transfer tape would look like this. It would look like this, and it's just a clear piece, right? But because we're using iron-on, we don't need to use this because it's already built in to the piece we just cut out. So we're going to hit finish here so we can see what our image looks like so that's going to help us weed this out so another thing I always like to do when I'm weeding is to just roll over it one more time to make sure that the vinyl I want to keep is going to stay it's going to stay so um, I prefer this weeding tool as opposed to crickets. And I just had cricket one out here. Where did I put it? I may have put it away. Yeah, this is the cricket tool. And I bought these at um, Princess Auto. It was a set of, uh, it was quite a few in it. I think four or five. So they all come like this. And I prefer to use this. It's got a nice grip on it and you get, you know, four choices. So today we're going to go with this one. So we are going to bring the light over. I do have this I'm going to show you also. I do have a Cricut weeding light. So this is by Cricut. Comes like this. You power it on, 
gives you there's different settings it's very bright but i can't really see that as soon as i put it on i can see my design it's very helpful when i'm doing black but at the same time my light also helps so i can dim this down to whatever setting i want so yeah there's at least five settings in it so i'm not going to use that today though i'm just going to use I've got my lamp here. Let's see if I can pull it up a bit closer. Since we're done cutting, we'll sit it here. Actually, maybe we can pop that up now. Okay. And we're gonna shine it on here and I'm going to look and I need to remember that I'm doing three berries and that. I can see my berries. So we're gonna start right at the berries. Now, when you are weeding, this is why I purchased this little guy at the Dollar Tree. It was for to hold your nail polish, but I'm gonna, I use this for my weeding. So what you want is a pair of tweezers, and these are crickets, but I find those too big as well. I just use a regular pair of tweezers. And so what I'm gonna do is just pull away all this excess vinyl. And sometimes, yes, you do have a lot of vinyl waste, especially on like a piece like this, because it's spaced out for us the way they want us, the way they want it to be on the design. Anyway, I'm going to sit that there for a minute. I'm just going to let you see again what it is we're making. So let's put this guy in front. So you'll see that it was spaced out there, right? This one I can just pull by hand. So look at how nice this comes off. Boom, done. Now I'm also looking to see that it's not a solid red. I have to take the middle piece out. So I need to be very careful to see where that comes out and start weeding that because you see what just happened there? The whole thing just came up. Let's iron it down again. We want to hold that. Yeah, it's coming up. So I want to go to a different corner. Let's start at this corner. Now you see how that one didn't move? So you pick it up, you get your little tweezers, and you pull. Boom, done. That's called weeding. So that piece is done. So this is sticky on the back because this would have been your transfer tape, but it's already on there for you. So we're going to sit that upside down. Uh, we're going to go to the green. So the green was those leaves up at the top. It's much easier to weed out regular vinyl, I find, to see it. Or even cardstock. Cardstock is really easy to see. This iron-on can be difficult at times. Again, we're just going to pull it off and hope for the best that we're not pulling off the wrong thing here. And just like that you see all this waste but it is how it is so that we're throwing out there is our little green so we're gonna sit those remember this is sticky so sit them upside down like that now we got what's this oh this is our um, rolling pin the brown and it's uh, right here so you want to get it started close enough to it most people do start at a corner. I like to start where the pattern is because uh, just like this, we're gonna hold that down a bit. It seems to be lifting. Sometimes it doesn't cut right through, but I think it's gonna be fine. We're just gonna peel it this way. So don't always, you know, if it's not coming with you, go to the other end. There's our rolling pin. So this took a little bit longer to weed out because it's a little bit more detailed. So this is my shiny side. So that's my my good, uh, that's the side that I had down. So we're going to come here and we're going to start it at the B here. I'm going to take these guys and we're going to come down here and start pulling. Now, as you pull away, sometimes I go ahead and trim as I go. Just 
Because why are we pulling that away? Let's go up here. Let's have a look here. What's going on? Yeah, once you get her started, it's usually pretty good. So we're going to come across here. This is our... Uh, top and this is why this comes in handy because i like i said i trim and go let me get my smaller scissors here so we're going to just trim that off and if we got some little intricate pieces here that's where that comes in handy to get them off our because this is all waste right here I do try to cut it to as close as the pattern as I can, so I'm not trying to pull so much. This vinyl is very strong. So we're just going to cut and go as we go. Now, I missed some of the E here, so I want to pick it up. And it's only a little tiny piece. But we don't want to leave it behind because we don't want that going on our iron on. We're going to come here. So if you don't want to spend the money on that bright light, see how I have this little piece? Well, that's what I use this for. If you don't want to spend the money on that bright light, just get yourself one of these little lights. It just plugs in and even has a USB cord to plug into your laptop or wherever you're working if you don't have an extra power cable. I love this little light. So bear with me while we weed out all this. If it takes too long, I may just, uh, I may just cut this part out and bring you to the finished product, but my light still on? No. All right. So you see, we got that little uh, T in that coming out. Again, something like that. I would just cut it because I'm working on the top here. And I'm just coming across, going up around my T. And if you haven't noticed by now, I am left-handed. Let me know if any of you are lefties. We tend to do everything backwards, don't we? Or that's what people think. So when you are doing letters, you need to be very careful. I've lost many of uh, little dots off eyes and stuff. So you want to go slow and steady and make sure that you're getting it how it's supposed to be. I don't know why that keeps going off, but always refer back to your screen when uh, you're not sure what you're supposed to be taking away. And this iron-on really sticks well to the uh, transfer paper. So we're going along here. And have we finished up here yet? No, we got to do the H. See how little pieces just come off? You can see how this is really sticking on me. So when I, you know, get a big piece like that, just cut it off. It's, it's garbage. Same way here, we're not gonna need this, so it's garbage. Just make sure you're not cutting off any letters in the process. And again, get rid of all those little pieces because we don't want those to get ironed on. So I'll just show you my progress here. We got Tis the 
We'll have to go back, clean up our season, but first let's get the main part out. Get rid of all that excess vinyl that we don't need. And just keep, you know, picking and pulling and some people find this uh, enjoyable, the weeding part, relaxing. I personally, this is the part I don't like, is the weeding. You know, I love to create and I love the finished product, but I'm not enjoying weeding. All right, let's go here. We're trying to get our season out. Keep that on. It keeps going to sleep on us. So, just got to make sure you know what you're doing here. So, this is the G, which I don't think I should have that part coming with it. So, let's just get the end here. trying to get this this is very sticky very sticky indeed it's like I said it's always harder to do a more intricate you know lettering and stuff because you want to make sure you don't wreck your letters all right so there we got our four out so see how this is all we don't need this we're just gonna clip it off throw it out so it doesn't Get in the way. All this is going to be garbage. It's like an operation here. Very slow and delicate. So now we can go in and take out the... See how that came out? And this is where this comes in handy. All the dogs here people outside so now we're at the baking I just want to give it an extra little roll because it doesn't seem to be wanting to pull up properly okay but we can go back and we can take away this in the seasoning or season I'm thinking bacon so I'm seasoning everything here all right, so we're going to take that out. We'll take this one out. See how I just get in there with the pick and pull away because it's already cut out, remember. I think we got some extra stuff going on right here. Uh, this is where you need um, this to pull that away. See that? And there's a little one here. I'm gonna pick that away. And then always double check to make sure that you have, um, sometimes you leave the center of an E or something. So just always double check before you go ironing it on because once it's ironed on, it's there for good. So I'm just going to hold this up and so far she's looking good, isn't it? So now we're on baking. And baking was, if you can see here, it was kind of double, double layered. So I had to be very careful as to how I pulled that out. So we're just going to kind of get a nip at the end here. And just pull that up. I do have another little smaller pair of scissors. Yeah, I do like these are the Cricut scissors, and I do like them. They're nice for working with. So you just want to get in there and start clipping away. Because like I said, this is um, double layered here. So we want to hope that it's coming out the way we want it to. Yep, 
you see I'm looking here and no we're right we are right just got to make sure that you're pulling out the right bits so this is the G we're almost there people we're almost there alrighty so there so we just got to clean up the B and the A and what happened to my G there oh it's still there it's just uh, it was coming off all right, so let's do the A. So the A did have a little line in it there, so I did leave that. Now the B has little lines and then the two circles. So when I'm looking at it, I want the two circles out and not the lines. So you gotta be careful, that's why I say, double check what it is you're removing because that just came out. See how it came out and left the line? Woo! So yeah, make sure that she sticks there. And it looks like we got another one to do. Right here. Let's be super careful. Just like that, we're done. Another little piece there on the B. All right, so we have everything cut out. So I'm going to clean up this mess and get the iron out warmed up, and I'll show you how to iron it on. Okay, we're back. So normally I would put um, a towel down or use the ironing board, but because we're doing oven mitts and they've already got this on the back, uh, it's not necessary. So that my iron is heating up. I did put my light on there to make sure you could see because we're losing some daylight here. And what I'm gonna do is uh, take my, tis the season for baking, and we're gonna kind of center it in here. But what I want to make sure is that I leave enough room for when I put this on. And that's gonna be perfect right there. So, what we're going to do is, uh, this is um, the Teflon paper that you get. So I could show you that method. And then after that, we will, I want to make sure that that's centered, which it is. We'll do the Teflon and with an iron, you just want to press. You don't want to move the iron because you don't want your vinyl moving. Now, uh, Cricut does have heat presses, which uh, you set the temperature and there's a timer on it and they probably work a lot better than an iron, but I'm not sure if I want to buy a Cricut heat press or more of a industrial heat press where you pull down the big clamp and lock it when you're making t-shirts. So I'm still, on the fence to which one I would prefer. I do a lot of iron on. I do make a lot of t-shirts and personalized things for, you know, family and friends. So for now, my lovely iron will do. So I have my iron set on cotton. Actually, somebody moved it to linen there. It's on cotton and you do, do not use steam. All you want is heat and press. And hopefully I have enough arm strength to press this down. Now I'm looking at it and I'm wondering if I should personalize them and put their names in the middle off the uh, rolling pin there. But let's see how this is. Lift our Teflon. Now it's going to be very, very hot. So you want to make sure that you're using those tweezers. Let's use the big Cricut tweezers. All you want to do is pull it back. And if it looks like it's on there pretty good, just keep peeling. Slow, slow, slow. Just like that, it's on. This is now garbage. So we're going to throw that out. The next color we want to do is our red. Now, uh, you probably can't see my screen anymore, but we want to know that that goes in the middle of our four. 
So I do have a little trick when you are layering, but we don't have a lot of stuff here layering, so we don't need to use the little trick that I know. But I'm looking at my pattern and that point is kind of in the middle of the E and this one goes to the end. So I want mine to be similar to that. And so that placement looks good. Now you see how it was cut out that it is perfect. I don't have to do any lining up to match it up. So we're going to put that on. Now this was my other method. Normally I would just cut a piece of um, parchment paper. Parchment paper works the same if you don't have the Teflon. And what you want to do. Now the Teflon is better because it does hold the heat more but i can show you that we're just doing two little pieces that the iron is just as good i mean sorry the parchment paper is just as good so you just want to hold you don't want to hold for too long because you don't want to burn you don't want to burn what you're ironing it on to you check if it's not good then you go back and you do it again so we're going to peel this back and look at that you see how perfect that comes off too just using um, the parchment paper. So don't worry if you do not have uh, the Teflon paper right away. So we're going to put our leaves on. And I'll move my iron out of the way. So they do go this way. And one little point is there, you know, above these. So that's how I'm going to place mine. Just going to match it up. And the other thing you could do to make sure that she stays there good is roll it. I love this new roller, my new toy. Roll her on there. Okay, we're going to use the Teflon this time. And we're going to apply pressure and heat. Again, we can go in and check it. Don't go for too long because it does get very hot. So we're going to peel that back. We were putting on the green and boom, just like that, she's on. So the only thing we have to do now is our rolling pin. So we're going to take our rolling pin. I don't have a lot of work sp workspace here because um, I didn't want to go in to another area that it, I had the camera all set up. So we're looking. They kind of had it starting in the middle of the B and ending by the G. So that's where we're going to place ours. And like I say, I might personalize them with their name in it. I think that'd be cute right in the rolling pin. I'm just going to cover this whole thing because I don't want to burn my pot holder. I originally wanted red ones, you know, for Christmas, but they were sold out. And I do have a daughter that loves blue, so I thought she would like this teal blue one. And the other three that I'm making are in gray. So two daughters are getting gray and I also made one for my mom. So these are great little gifts. Um, if you want to do this, you know, for a teacher or something like, like you saw, I bought, uh, you buy the spatula, the sugar cookie mix and the sprinkles all at Dollar Tree and you tuck it into one of these and personalize it. So for, what's that? So for $5 plus tax, it's a perfect little gift. Oh, it would be $6 because then remember I got the cookie, cut, the cookie cutters as well. That was a tongue twister, wasn't it? All right, now let's see if this guy is on. Yep, perfect. Peeler right off. So we're going to let this cool down. And uh, once it's cooled down, I can go back in and I can layer it again with a uh, 
don't know what that is. A little bit of fluff or something. I can uh, either put their name there or maybe underneath. So I'm going to go and make two more and I'll show you the finished product at the end. Well, I hope you enjoyed my little creation there. This is the finished product. I did put uh, Stephanie's name on it. That one's for my daughter. So I just tied on with a bit of red ribbon. The little cookie cutters. There was a six pack. That's from Dollar Tree. It's from Dollar Tree. Um, the sprinkles are from Dollar Tree. And the Betty Crocker sugar mix is from Dollar Tree. And the only thing that I didn't buy there was the spatula because I thought these were absolutely uh, beautiful spatulas rather than a plastic one. So they are getting one of these. And it did come from uh, Dollarama. So that's the gray one I did for Stephanie. And then this is the blue one I did for my other daughter, Andrea. And the other two put their surnames on, so I'm not going to share them. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Have a great Sunday evening. I will be back tomorrow, Monday, with Vlogmas 20. A repeat, right? Yes. Now remember, remind me that I have to open 19 tomorrow. I don't know what I'm thinking about these days. Anyways, enjoy your evening. Take care. And I will see you all tomorrow. Good night. Bye.